All right. I don't think that we're. Why don't we have the game captures going? Oh, we didn't transition over to the right screen. There we go. All right. Let's get this party going. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, freaks, geeks, mutants, aliens, and other sort of life forms. I'm Stone. She's natural queen bee. Hey, you know, with her buddy Ashy Slashy, and we are all natural typical gamers. And today we have a little bit of a different kind of show than we normally have. I always say that, and then a lot of the no same normal stuff happens. But that's okay. That's okay, because this time... We're going to have a lot more explanations and a lot of other... Uh, I've got a lot of questions from you guys lately about things related to 76 specifically. And so hopefully we'll be able to uh, answer some of these questions. Maybe make some things make some sense. And hopefully make your Fallout experience a little bit better. So... Um, if ever you... Like I said, if you ever do any questions, either sub you can submit them to us in chat. Feel free to join us on Discord. And we have a Fallout ranting section where you can uh, kind of drop all the questions that you need. We have a, a whole awesome community of really friendly people that are pretty good at answering stuff. Um, some of them also got weird humor, which is fun. Yeah, see, Nacho Quimby said hi. Oh, I need to jump all this stuff. Nacho Quimby says hi here. No, there we go. We're gonna, there we go. She's Nacho Quimby. And this is Commando Stone. I love how the water just keeps cutting in and out. I think I kind of... I think if I activate this, it might be a little bit less annoying. Because then my voice is just going to pop up into the... Water sound that's already existing. I think it just kind of may make things a little bit smoother. I don't know. <clears throat> We're still dealing with a whole new setup, so... I'm trying to make the most... It's not a new setup, but... You know, it's newer than it was. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to game game view. Yeah, this mode. We're gonna go ahead and shut down that preview since we don't need it. I think we're good to go with this. Let me go ahead and check. I still feel like my audio settings for this are just way too high for life. I'm gonna leave that kind of a little bit more in the backgroundy. As she's being attacked. By dogs. That thing does amazing, insane damage. That's something else we're going to be talking about a little bit later. So, today we're going to be talking about some of the basics that you're going to need for um, probably your level, I would say, uh, Maybe 5 to 50 Vault Dweller. Um, very basic stuff for a lot of you much more seasoned players. Uh, people, that, people that have been around and seen a couple things. Been places. Um, but even some of these things you might find useful. So make sure you stay tuned. Stick around. Um, I, wrote, I wrote out a script for this whole thing. And we're going to see if I can follow with this to the most part. I've disabled myself from chat, so I shouldn't have a lot of cross interference and, and stuff. I do have chat pulled up, my monitors, for the stream. Let me get all these up. Alright, so I will have these that I can cross reference and kind of see what's going on. So I have chat pulled and, up, my monitors, for the stream. Let me get all these up. Got an echo whirling on that. Alright, so I should be able to see what chat's saying, if chat says anything. Um, like I said, most of this stuff is going to be super, super basic, but it should be useful. Um, I've got my, my brother who just showed up. He's been asking me a lot of these questions, and it got me kind of thinking about this. I was like, wow. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the stuff I didn't learn until I was well over level 100, which in some cases is, is quite, it's quite a long way, let me tell you. Um, it takes a lot of work to get there, over level 100. So, one of the first things I'm going to say to everybody that ever comes out of the vault, or the first things that you should do, um, is you need to develop good habits. Like, 
one of the first things that you should probably do is make it a habit to pick up everything that's not nailed to the floor. And, and I mean like literally like everything. Like there's uh, pieces of wood that are around everywhere. The first thing when you come out of the vault, there's going to be liberators that surround you and then chunks of wood everywhere and then rad stags. What you're going to want to do is make sure to harvest as many of those pieces as possible. Um, collect them up and get used to storing them in your workbench. Now your stash box is this guy right here. They're all going to look pretty much the same. Any of the ones that you're going to see in the wild are going to look like this. Alright. This is a scrap box that comes with Fallout first. This is a paid feature that you're going to get for that it, with the monthly subscription. Now, if you learn how to use your stash box right, you, you shouldn't need this so much. This, however, is stupendously and incredibly useful. Now, once you learn how to use your stash box right, you're going to be head of the game. And to learn how to use your stash box right, we're going to introduce you to our friends, what I lovingly call the break stations, but are more commonly known as the crafting stations. Um, wherever in the world that you're going to find a stash bench, you're going to also find these. And the two places on the map that are most common, that are most easily accessible, are going to be Red Rocket Stations or um, oh, Train Stations or Red Rocket Stations. Now, every major kind of city area around has both of those in one spot or another. The Train Station will usually be on one side and the Red Rocket Station will be on the opposite side of it. For instance, in Morgantown, it's literally uh, opposite side from Morgantown Station. We can show you on the map here. Let's go over here to Morgantown. So, here is Morgantown Station. On the opposite side, on the other side of the river, right here where this marker is. Alright, that's a Red Rocket Station that you can get to. Alright, down here in Sutton, where you see Sutton Station right here. The Red Rocket Station is right here. So you have positions on either side of most of the major city areas. I'm pretty sure... So Flatwoods right here at the center is where the, uh, the town is. The Red Rocket Station is over here by the Green Country Lodge. It's in this area, I, I think. I can't remember, it's been a while. But they are all there. Same thing even with Watoga. You've got Watoga Station right here, right? And across the way on the other side of town, you've got a Red Rocket, a Red Rocket Station. So, when you get used to figuring out where those are at, you're going to be able to find a cheap, easy, effective way to break down your stuff. Because you know there's always going to be a break station. And in some cases, there's a, a cooking bench. Usually, I think with Red Rockets outside of them, there's... I feel like there's usually one. Let me catch up. But at the train stations, for the most part, they all definitely have a break station, and a couple of them have cooking benches. So if you use them to at least break down your pieces, stash your bits, you can fast travel to your camp. Now, if you're low enough level or you just started, depending on how long you've been playing this, you may very well not even have a camp set up. You might not even know what a camp is, what to do with that. So setting up your camp is pretty easy. You go into any open area that's not a reserve spot on the map. You're going to press B. It'll be B, um, B on Xbox, circle on PlayStation. Bring up your pit boy. And you're going to press L1 to move your camp. It's going to show you this green line around the entire outside and perimeter of it. And the camp unit itself will highlight green when it's in an area that you can actually place it. So like right here, for instance, which I actually did not think this would work, but you can put a camp like right here, for instance. And right now we're right in between Poseidon and Charleston Junkyard and Charleston Train Yard. And then there's a train station there. So once you see that, you can place your camp there and start building. Now, I would highly recommend that you pick a spot that has a occurring mineral vein. Um, there's several different maps you can look up on the internet uh, if you'd like. Or just spend your time wandering around the wasteland. Write down notes like back in the day. Which is how you would be doing in the wasteland. So, 
Um, what you do is you take note of where you can find good spots that have those. You want these kind of deposits. This happens to be an iron deposit, but so, some places you'll get lead. Some places you'll get, uh, you know, steel. Uh, what else? There's a whole bunch of other different materials. Junk. There's junk materials back here. Oh, hey. All right, who's con who's taking the workshop? See, here's a junk pile where you can make a junk pile react uh, resource extractor. So once this thing claims, I'll be able to show you this. The next thing that you really need to get in the habit of, um, like I said, the very first habit, we're going to go and double back to this. Always break down and stash your junk. Every single time you finish going through a place, um, your, your first thing you should do, there's kind of the three cycles of gameplay in this. You've got combat or battle, you've got scavenging, and then you've got crafting. Now, in the transition between those three phases, uh, different things are priority. You know, when you're in battle, when you're battle mode, you need to be in battle mode. You should make sure to have all your battle perks set up, everything needed to lay as much damage or prevent as much damage as possible. I've got an open spot here. Um, which one of these is in the wrong spot? I love how I'm like wondering about that now and it's probably nothing. Anyways, it doesn't matter. These guys are fine. I need to redo some of these perks to move some stuff, but uh, some of the very basic essential perks, like this is probably the thing that causes the, the vast amount of confusion between everybody that plays the game. They don't kind of see what's going on with this and they're like, hey, what do we do with all these perk cards here? Nice. We got the workshop. So perk cards are powerful things that help you gain uh, certain advantages while you play the game. Sort of change things up for you. So right now, for instance, we just got done taking this workshop. And all the enemies are dead. There's no more battle to do. We would enter the scavenging phase to gather stuff. But since I didn't really shoot anything, there's not a lot for me to gather. We're going to go right to crafting. So in my case right here, one of my teammates has taken this base, uh, this workshop. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, is fix stuff up. Now, there's several habits you can get into. Um, the more that you level up, every five levels that you go, you're going to unlock perk packs. Perk packs are going to give you different things that you can kind of... Uh, well, they're going to have four different cards in them. And all your cards will be listed in the different areas where they need to show up. So, let me... Oh. Hang on a minute. So, in this case, we're going to be going under intelligence. Um... I should probably keep that just so I can move around. I'm going to swap off one of my damage perks, which is going to be Nerd Rage, which is an essential one. We'll talk about this one later. And uh, we're going to swap this out for Contractor, and I'm going to share this with the entire group. So everybody that's building on this workshop for right now can build for half the cost. Contractor is one of the essential perks that we're going to talk about here in a bit when we go over the specific perk cards that you're going to need. Not necessarily that you do need, but I would highly recommend keeping in your arsenal. Because now that 76's gameplay is sort of changed up to where you can, uh, well, you can kind of change your build into anything that you want at any time. Uh, I highly recommend ge becoming friends with some of these different perks. So you can figure out how to better maximize them for uh, optimal gameplay. You know, get the most bang for your buck. So, in this case, we have this uh, workshop that we just took over. We have contractor set up. I'm going to go ahead and get all this hooked up. Now, a lot of these places already have a power supply that comes to them from uh, usually from a, a local power supply. Like, for instance, uh, Poseidon power plant powers up the entire forest and the toxic valley. I think I think it's the entire to most of the toxic valley I don't know where the box is so if you don't know where the box is The way to do this is pick a nice high spot Go to generators Grab yourself a fusion generator And pop it on the roof like you got a nice fancy AC all right, we got 
that hooked up. Let's get this junk collector going. We're gonna hook up a power connector. Now, some of these connectors are you get later on, or you can buy them from Graham, who's a wandering trader. We'll talk about him later. Or you can go to a place called the White Springs. Which we'll also talk about later. But that is a place that sells this, uh, th the plans for some of these larger, uh, you know, uh, different electrical plans. It's called the Advanced Power Connector Plan. It's up very essential. I actually sell it on. So if you ever see me in the world, uh, feel free to swing by. I usually have a copy for sale. And I usually sell it for like 200 caps, which is about the same as you pay for it from the vendor. So, are we being hunted by animals? We really are. So, <clears throat> as you start leveling up and taking over, like you see our buddy here, he's 34 right now. Uh, you're gonna want to get in the habit of taking over workshops. Now, workshops are a contentious thing in 76. A lot of people will say avoid them at all cost. Um, you're gonna get yourself into trouble. Which is the truth. We're going to explain this. Uh, but. <clears throat> taking workshops is one of those high risk, high reward kind of things. Um, when you take a workshop over, you do invite yourself and your team to open PvP. So the opportunity for other players to show up at the workshop. And fight or contest you for ownership of that place. However. You also gain access to the defend missions. Which is what we just did. See how it says. Uh, defend Charleston landfill now these missions pay out pretty well for themselves besides getting lots of junk and plans and uh, really good pretty good experience especially if you're on an events team we'll talk about that in a minute you will uh, you'll come to find out that workshops are one of the easiest ways that you can go about making something happen in the game if nothing's happening with uh, understanding how workshops work and being able to uh, take risks to go out and kind of capture those resources you give yourself the ability to uh, gain potentially a lot more resources and more importantly uh, ironically through uh, depending on how the battles go and things like that uh, opportunities to make friends so it really just depends like a lot of people that end up showing up for PvPs most of the time seem like they're trying to make friends and a lot of people either they don't know how to make friends or they just they think that battling is the way to go about it sometimes it's just personal preferences it's just different things and uh, a lot of times people that are like if you find yourself in a battle at a workshop or something uh, just talk to somebody you'd be surprised how often that they're like hey how's it going um, you know I think everybody out here is trying to make friends so that's an important thing to always kind of do so in that spirit <clears throat> we try to always take over workshops and uh, build them up a bit. So we put all the resources together. Hook everything up so that way anybody that comes by here can be able to uh, access some good stuff. I, I always put the honey thing here. And ever since I unlocked the Nuka Collectron, I've been just throwing these things around. So, I leave all of them open so anybody that comes by can be able to grab stuff if they need to and can mosey on their way. Most of the time people won't fight you if your um, resources are open like this. They'll just kind of come through and grab everything and, and kind of piss off. Um, because most people really don't want to deal with the hassle of a fight. We are currently... Well, I'm at Charleston. Everybody just left me. I built everything up that we needed to, I think. I think we can go. There's a bunch more things that I could potentially build up but that's all right we got a few things important things going oh they're just up the street from me am i about to get moved on no okay i always get all paranoid about pvp it's a thing because people will, like show up and just try to like whoop on ass also i'm wearing a really ridiculous outfit at the moment give me a second Here, now an equally ridiculous outfit. So, we're gonna go head back over past AVR. We're gonna be heading into Charleston proper. So, right here, we are at the. Ooh, see? This is what I'm talking about. When you wander around the wasteland, you're gonna find these little chunks of whatever. They look kind of useless. But when you walk up to them, you can harvest them for wood. 
Now there's two schools of thought with this. You can, there is a perk under luck. I can show you this real quick right now because I think I have it. All right, we're gonna go all the way down. Oh, I don't have it right now. Well, let's go grab it. I have 50 something levels, so I'm sure I can lose one for purpose of demonstration. Okay, so there's a perk here called Woodchucker, which is collect twice as much wood when harvesting wood. Twice as much when harvesting wood. Which you can get, which means every single one that you get, instead of getting four or eight, it would be eight or 16. So it, it's a great way to build up a lot of wood really quickly. You can pop on Woodchucker, just run around the entire way, uh, wasteland, particularly the forest region, or like this northern part of the ash heap, and you're gonna get a whole mess of, uh, of wood and you can just take that and stash it in the box if you have um fallout first you can go and load that in the, in the scrap box and try to build yourself a nice big collection of that up and uh you'll be very very happy about that as much as it would seem like kind of a useless resource and with it being as plentiful as it is i feel like a lot of people pass it up but it is recommended to try and keep several thousand pieces of wood around if you can mostly because if you like to build bases like if you like building camps if you like building up workshops um if you like repairing stuff you you seem to always kind of need wood and so you want to keep that in mind and make sure you have lots, and most of all for cooking if you're cooking you need lots and lots of wood so make sure to get that if you can Ooh, that was delicious we just turned him into a little gooey pile look at that All right. So don't be afraid to kind of get around the map. Don't be afraid to look. I know I'm kind of blasting through things right now like a little bit of a maniac, but uh, you know, more or less I'm worried about what, the, what we're talking about. Keep an eye out in certain spots where it looks like on the map. It might not be marked, but there's usually like camps. Look around the, the spots where the uh, they're cooking and you'll more often than not find Recipes of one type or another. They're just kind of hanging out. Give me just a moment. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. So. Where were we? I think I lost everybody. Oh, there he is. So went through train stations. Cap okay, caps. Uh, one of the big questions I always get asked about is like, what's a, qu what's a quick way to get caps? Or what's a good way to get, uh, well, what's a good way to get more money? And surprising as it may sound, the best thing you can do is pick up going back to like the second thing I said pick up everything not nailed to the ground at all times um as you're running through grab and pick everything and there's a few perks you can get that will uh that can help your odds of making sure you're getting successful harvesting as you're going through it um and you can do that without sacrificing too much firepower um it seems like some of the most successful harvesters I've known are all stealth builds. So whether they're commandos, whether they're melee, whether they're ironically heavy guns, it doesn't matter. Um, stealth is your friend. Avoid being seen. Keep to the shadows and uh, keep a very, very big stick with you. And you're probably wondering, well, like, what does that even mean? 
I'm trying to get caps, man. I need money. Well, by harvesting and gathering everything that you can and uh, dive, dive in here like that. Sorry about that. That was a little dramatic. By picking up and harvesting everything that you can, you get a possibility to get the three kind of big things to make money from. That's going to be guns or weapons, chems, and food. The reason why you want to use those three things um, and you want to alternate between all three of them is because they're the most plentiful, uh, renewable resource that you get. So every enemy that you fight, you're going to constantly be getting weapons. They're in most cases going to drop a lot of food also. Um, and depending on how you have things set up, they can drop a lot of chems for you. So there's a lot of potential that you can get there. Uh, for each battle set that you go through, so migrating in between towns, remember I told you there's the three phases, battle, scavenging, and crafting. You want to optimize that scavenging, um, mostly by just maneuvering around. There are perks that can increase what you're picking up from each. And like I said, we'll talk about perk cards here in just a minute more specifically but really it's just you know use your eyes dig around look around look for little containers kind of get used to where paths are at for stuff because every time you load into a world on a different server in most cases you're going to have that stuff regenerating and popping back up and uh even if it's not today it'll probably be tomorrow so keep it in mind so there's some examples of that like if you're harvesting plastic go to morgantown high school if you're trying to get steel, really go to Uranium Fever or just about anywhere where there's mole miners. If you're trying to get uh, lead, you know, there's hemlock holes and we'll talk about that. Oh, excuse me, uh, lucky home mine. That's later. And if you're trying to get acid, there's hemlock holes. That's a, another thing we'll talk about. But for now, when you're before level 25, you just need to just look around. Look in all these little buildings here. I mean... There's, of course, trouble to find everywhere, around every turn, in every corner. Uh, but if you're willing to look and willing to dig, you're, you're probably going to find a lot more stuff than you intend to do. So be willing to go that extra mile. Be willing to just spend a little more time in the buildings searching all the kind of little containers. So in the spirit of searching containers, we're going to talk about a couple different of the perks that you need. To just kind of make the most out of life. You need to back up, homie. You too. You guys are getting way too cozy. I might have to just hurry this up and catch up. So like I said, for just, you know, sake of argument, just keep walking around. Make sure to search everything. Be willing to dig in all the different containers and all the houses. And you're going to find a whole lot of different stuff. Mostly what you want to do is pay attention to the different pathways that you want. Because um, certain pathways you're going to find a lot more stuff than others. And the game rewards you in certain ways for that. So in his case, see, yeah, he's overweight on stuff, so he can't pick this up. We're just going to pick it up, I guess, because that's what we got. We should probably go to Wade Airport. So, with... When you're in a situation like this where you're raiding a town, there's a couple different options. A, we can go to a train station, which is just over that way. We can take over a workshop. Or, uh, if you have somebody that's able to, you can drop a tent and try to break as much stuff as you down into a tent. As you can into a tent. Um, Fallout First works really, really well. And if you have somebody on your team that's especially trusted, that you know that can handle your resources and be able to you know reciprocate things back um i would say be willing to use that resource if you're not able to uh, you know afford uh first by yourself um there's a lot of people that work out i mean a lot of people in this game are super helpful and want to do the best that they can for you um check out some trusted um there's a bunch of different organizations and groups out there and mostly just try to make good friends. Be willing to kind of uh, check things out. And, of course, I would say if you can, of course, get yourself Fallout first. Even if it's for a month. You can take everything that's inside of your stash box. Stuff inside the scrap box. Save yourself a huge amount of space. Especially when it comes to lead and steel. 
and really kind of get the most out of that. So, mostly from a contextual basis, we're going to change gears a bit. When it comes to maximizing the amount of junk that you're getting from scavenging, a perk you can get pretty early on is going to be called Scrapper. And a lot of people, depending on their builds, will keep Scrapper on at all times. So you never take it off. Um, mostly so you can just run up to any bench at any time and just very speedily just blast out all of this extra materials which is look at all this extra plastic that we're getting from these charged rifles which you get from super mutants by the way so I'm not telling you what to do with your lives I'm just saying you know right there just scrapping those with scrapper give us double as much materials as we would normally have Then we run to our scrap box and stash everything. See how much stuff I was carrying with me? I should not have been carrying all this junk running around like that. Always get in the habit of pick everything up, break everything down, and then, uh, you know, make sure to stash it all right away. And some of the big materials that you're going to find constantly in very small increments are going to be like aluminum, screws, um, springs, steel, lots of steel. There's always lots of steel. I'm going to talk about something else real quick also that you can use to maximize this. So going back into your special menu, I always recommend keeping um, a three-star perk under luck that you can switch out. I, I call it the hot swap perk, but something that you always know that you're going to switch out. So, like, in the case of, like, I swap Nerd Rage out, or, excuse me, I switched Demolition Expert out for Scrapper. Under Luck, I swap out Serendipity, and I'm going to put on Super Duper. So, any time that you're going to go to craft, um, you're going to make yourself food, you're going to cook, always throw on Super Duper. Anytime you're going to craft anything, I mean anything, put on Super Duper. Um, if you have super duper and let me double check the rear. Oh, we're definitely in bloodied mode <clears throat> If you're bloodied with unyielding armor your luck goes way up So we're bloodied Let's go ahead and cook all the stuff up with super duper It should take the amount of meat that we have here and then double it for the most part Remember we were talking about making caps earlier. There's the three ways to make caps. You've got uh, weapons, chems, and food. Now, in my case, because I tend to do a lot of hunting and I find a lot of dead, you know, corpses around. There's lots of meat. Um, and I have super duper. Once you get over level 50, I go ahead and break everything down and I sell most of the food. Um, mostly because the guns I need for materials. It just depends. There's, you know, it just now depends on what I'm doing. For supplies. And but I'll sell some of the food here for caps. So every day you're going to start with 1,400 caps when you haven't been in yet. Depending on how your build is and how your play style is, um, food and drink I come to find is one of the best ways to get a lot of money very steadily. Like alcohol, which I never drink. I always have plenty of it. You know, one or two caps adds up really quickly. So here we have the mud chops over three each. Now, I should probably stop for a second. Let's go under our perk cards again. We're going to hot swap out Inspirational for a second because we're, uh, you know, we're not building anything at the moment. We're going to swap on Hard Bargain so we can get a better trade price. Let's go back to our food that we had. Those were just three each. Oh, and there's still three each. I did all that work for nothing. That's funny. Welcome, citizen. I am authorized. So with charisma, I think charisma maxes out at 15. So when you scroll over here, we are currently at 18. So it can't get any higher than that. I guess I may as well take off hard bargain and put back on inspirational. And I should probably share that. Oh wait a minute. Where'd it go? Be sure here we to go. Stop. Up. While you can. Let's get rid of all this stuff here. 
the food used to be worth. It seems like it was worth a lot more. But also when you sell a lot of it, those three caps at a time build up really quickly. Especially when you're killing, you know, whole towns worth of super means. And then you're hitting it again with uh, Don't super no duper to make more of them. The so we have 60 water here. Five caps each, which we can turn around and sell for it. I think we have a bunch of Rataway right also just sitting here worth six caps each, 25 of them at six caps each. There's another perk that you can use to increase the amount of materials that you're getting from making chems, and that's called chemist. So we put chemist on and super duper. Damn it, I, th I forgot we were at Charleston. Sometimes there was a camp bench right there and you can just use the one right there. And this one has M's in it. I thought there was another workbench over here. Damn it. Alright, anyways, we're gonna swap that back off. We're just gonna go sell a couple things now. Or we'll, we'll wait till we get to a bench. So, my reason why, if you use Chemist and Super Duper, you can take, uh, like, Rataway or Radex and Purified Water, which you can make from your camp, and you can turn that into the diluted form and be able to make four to eight times as much of that. So what you do is you end up taking those and you sell it. While they're worth a little bit less, you end up making a higher volume of them. So you sell more of them for less caps, make a lot more money. Ooh, we're down the hill from this. I wonder if I can run that before this thing runs out. Run. So you notice as I'm running, I've got a pretty decent AP bar. And I'm dehydrated at the moment, and I'm not fed at the moment. I'm ready for quantums. to refill that there we go there we go oh i ran here before anything even spawned we're we throwing explosives i am way bloodied i am like zero health We need to fix this. This is a little bit too bloody for me. That's full strength right away, which I always tell you guys never take. And now I'm over encumbered. So right now the plasma flamer is one of the most overpowered weapons in the whole game. Pray for plasma flamer. Now we find ourselves back here at tea time. One of the best uh, events that you can show up to is a low level. Lots of good leveling, lots of low level creatures, lots of bugs. Hint, hint, wink, wink, wink. Those of you doing the tapo quest, this is one that you want to come and check out. There's a whole lot of different materials that you can gather up from this. Including materials that you can break down for lead and, in, or excuse me, that you can break down for acid. And including materials that you can use for making stim packs.
I still really wish that once we shot him with the flamer that it would cook him at the same time, but I understand how, you know, that's not how you cook food. I mean, I get it. I've seen barbecues in action. They don't, they don't work that same way. Another one that you can really need to make friends with right here is sweet water. And this is for anybody. You're telling me to talk Welcome to Sweetwater. I am afraid I'm short of it. Wonderful to see. We'll get you some honey. So I always try to keep a healthy supply Welcome of honey on me. Back, As you remember when we took that workshop earlier, I put down I'm that honey dispenser. Honey. Uh, that way you can you gather those. Excellent. Honey. Sometimes he gets caught in a glitch. You can just kind of open fire oh, in front of him. Then he's like, oh, shit. Oh, gracious. You're... Oh, delightful. That's a win. Please do return to brew up more if you enjoy the surprisingly subtle flavors. Bam. And just like that, we got a strange brew done. Talk to this guy. He knows, I think he knows how to talk to him. What's up, Elements? Thank you for coming and hanging out. Appreciate you tuning in. This is going to be a lot of super basic stuff, like I said, but it's going to be uh, a lot of essentials, little basic things and things that we've learned. It will hopefully make a little bit of difference in the time we spend in Appalachia. And so... I think we're at the point that... Uh, we might be able to talk a little bit more about some of the perk cards and some of the setup that sort of goes into that. So as you're leveling up between level 20 and level 50, the biggest thing I really try to emphasize is try to not spend your levels. Try to stash as many of them as possible. And in general, I try to say, try to keep a barrier of at least 10. Um, Mostly so if you need to make any changes or you need to buy anything different You have plenty of wiggle room to be able to buy new cards and not have to like stress out and try to You know speed level up or grind up or any of that um, But rather you can sort of know how you're going to shape your build as you're going around and sort of experimenting with it uh, With that in mind you need to prioritize on um, what will help you the most get through things and with that with that said, there's kind of a, a couple ways to do that. The way that I generally recommend, it's a little bit backwards to it, but you'd be going under getting a couple strength perks, at least five strength perks. So you can get traveling pharmacy up to level three and then uh, ideally bandolier level two. But bandolier, I think you don't even unlock to level 50. I'd have to double check that. But I think that there's a, a good amount of time that it's going to take for that to unlock. But by keeping yourself prepared for that, you can give yourself other options. And like I said, depending on how you enjoy to how you enjoy combat in this game, whether you're a ranged combat fighter, um, a melee fighter, uh, heavy weapons, however you want to go about it, um, that's going to also dictate kind of what you want to put your levels into. But for, like I said, for the sake of leveling and trying to get as much experience as possible, um, I'm going to go back to what I said before. And you want to craft everything that you possibly can. So that's gathering all the wood, gathering all the materials, all the berries, all the flowers, everything that you can get. And making every type of tea imaginable. You know, see log. You grab log. Um, and you get eight scraps of wood. And see, that's even without the that um, woodchuck perk. So, you don't necessarily need to get the woodchuck perk, but um, if you're in a quick bind and need to like bang out a couple hundred wood really quick, you can do that right with that. Ah, she's down. I'm trying to go. I'm trying to run. I'm too fat. I'm on the way. Don't die. Oh, no. No. And 
junk. This is why you don't leave junk. Because you die and then you drop it and some asshole walks through and gonna take all your junk. So, remember your tent. Remember your breakdown stations. Remember to gather up all the stuff that you need. Wood. You should never be at a loss for wood anywhere in this game. Hello, Joe. Like I said, if you are, um, feel free to take a little bit of a walk around the forest for about 10-15 minutes. And I guarantee you're going to find a couple pieces of wood. I mean, look, just since we scrapped everything, we have 12 pieces here. So, and we've been pretty good about scrapping constantly. So, once again, we're going to go and toggle over. Let's go serendipity, which serendipity for us is going to swap for super duper. Now you don't have to just use serendipity just use pick a three-star card and always use that same card and just swap yours back and forth for that That way as you're making stuff you're gonna make a whole lot more of it and you're gonna make a bunch of caps So now we're done crafting for the moment we're going to go ahead and swap super duper back off for serendipity. Boom. We're back into battle mode. And look, we're just walking down the hill and we found, ooh, look, more wood. There's, it's, there's wood everywhere. So you should never be at a loss. Um, and sometimes you are, sometimes you will be. It's okay. Just remember, you can walk back out and find some more. Look, sit flower. Cigarette machine. And just make sure to just search everything. Every little box, every little thing around. Usually right here, there's a plan sitting on top of this. Welcome, citizen. I am authorized to trade supplies. I think she's still trading the vendor. And like I said, when you get a chance to, so we just walk down the hill, we scrap stuff. Everything's busy, we can't get anywhere else. We're gonna scrap stuff. I'm gonna leave Demolition Expert off for a minute since I'm not using an explosive weapon. We'll just leave scrap around here. Break down the 10 millimeter. We're breaking down the right leg. See, we unlocked another plan. So the biggest thing with trying to make your sales is I would say try to sell as much of your food as possible. And then, you know, and then go from your food to your chems. Mostly because using chemists, you can either manufacture way more chems and have a lot more to sell. With weapons and stuff, I would say let your need for materials dictate that. If you really don't need any materials at the minute, like you got plenty of steel, you got all the pieces that you need, I would just say, just move on with it. You know, don't uh, don't worry about it. You can probably just sell it to the vendor, and uh, and get your caps for that. But on the other hand, like I said, you're gonna end up making a lot more cooking, and like especially like when you need yaoi meat, deathclaw meat, uh, scorch beast meat. All that stuff's worth a whole lot more than the uh, than most of the guns are in the game. So if by selling a lot more of them steadily, you're gonna end up. Let's see, here's the advanced power connector. By keep selling all of the different meats and stuff that you're cooking, not only are you gonna prevent it from going bad in your inventory, but you're gonna also make sure that you're kind of getting something for that. Uh, you're getting a little bit of caps out of that whole process. And always just make sure to leave yourself a little bit to eat. You know, you don't need to keep you know, 20 or 30 of them, especially if you're using Super Duper to cook. You should have a whole mess of them that you just don't even rightly know what to do with. So, you know, save yourself a couple. And depending on which one they are, make sure to spend some time learning the food descriptions and kind of becoming friends with what all the different stuff does. You will come to find some of them are more useful than others. If you have supplies to trade, I can be of service. I think she's still trading, but that doesn't matter. We're going to go to K 
chemmates do. So, one of the most basic things that you can do, and it's not just for low level players, any player, always go to feed the people. Stop what you're doing, finish selling your garbage, make sure you're light enough weight, fast travel yourself in. You will not be disappointed, and in fact, more often than not, uh, you will always leave the event satisfied. Some people get frustrated because it can get a little bit packed and there's a lot of people in there doing work, but uh, that's okay. Don't get frustrated about it. The rewards are well worth it. Especially when you stay through the entire event. I think as of the recent update, you get up to three legendary cores. And then you're also going to get five of the can meets too, which is going to give you a plus 5% experience boost. I think it's about plus 5% now. It might be 25. I have to check. So can meets do gives you a bonus 5% XP. Ooh, which is perfect timing because I just ran out. Look at that. We need death claw steak. So death claw steak does, for instance, give you plus two strength, plus sixty rads, or excuse me, plus sixty health, and gives ten rads. We need one of those already. Mole rat chunks give plus one to strength. Mutt chops give plus two endurance. Boiled food and stuff is not really good for anything unless you're a bloody build, in which case you can use it in a pinch to kind of push you back down into bloody mode. But really not a good idea because more often than I get dysentery or something terrible. Alright, so now we're bloodied. Whenever you see that little guy get all Hulkamaniac and rip his shirt off, it's go time, baby. Here we go. Make sure to always check this Nuka Cola machine because there's lots of Nukas in here. And it always changes up. You never know what different kinds are in there. Alright, let's pop the food processing machine. Alright, so to get all the meat for this, uh, to get all the supplies for this, rather, get, you can get up on top of here. Ooh, I'm getting shot to death. Just dissolves them. Bunch of jerks. Alright, so we got those up there. You need to stop it. You have attitude. There's another can here. Diced vegetable mix. Another can here. Dehydrated beef stock. And dog food. Ooh, fire. Who the hell is shooting me? And like I said, one of the biggest things why you want to come here is there's lots of different scavenges you can make, including ammunition, lots of food that you're going to get. It's a phenomenal mission. And that's why you're always going to see people here from level one all the way up into the multiple thousands. All coming here to do the same thing. Now to get that can meets too. So violent, so excessive.
Alright, so we've got a couple more left. <clears throat> There's two in the back here that I think I forgot. Yep. Now we just need the diced vegetable mix. I don't even know if anybody's over here, but... Flavored soy chunks, which we already have. There's one vegetable mix. We need one more. Those are both beef stock. Nice. So in case you need to do the pick a lock -a challenge, there's always one inside of Mama Dolce's also, inside of her office. As long as it's not been picked yet. Nice, last vegetable mix. Let's reactivate the machine. Ooh. I guess it's one of the best missions that you can do, period, in this whole game. That can meet stew is worth its weight in gold. Like I said, if we were on an events team, I'd be earning double XP for each of these guys, but with high enough intelligence, it doesn't matter. Not quite as much. Coming fire. We're not alone anymore. Dug, 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 dug. Like I said, it's one of the easiest missions around because you just come through, you protect the very basic uh, three points. You're gonna get this key right here, which they want you to check the terminal out. 
run a diagnostic routine. It'll tell you what failed. It'll say water pressure and intolerances. That means you have to fix this water valve right here. There's only the one valve and it will only spawn in that one spot. Next. Ooh, the mic didn't pop in right away. Let's see what shows up next. I see you were also a person of uh, culture. See all the rataways these guys drop? The rat X's and the, the looters and all that? That's excellent. That's free money. We are burning through a fair amount of rounds. thing triggers we run back over here activate the food processing terminal it's going to tell us one of two other spots it will not be the pipe now we go to the circuit breaker which is going to be on the right over here on this wall and it might do this to us one more time That's a lot of fun. Those nuclear grenades are spectacular. <sighs> Nothing like flaming death all around me. we lost one of the units already that top one nice two legendary cores and two treasury notes Not bad, not bad, not bad. Don't forget to rob the toilet paper. Make sure to grab all the meat that they drop.
and rinse and repeat. So while this section here is a little bit too far south to get to the red rocket stop, you can get to Morgantown Airport pretty easily. Now your first brake bench that you're going to get to is right here and it is a booby trap. Should be another one where the whole world explodes here in about two seconds. Um, I think I'm breaking stuff. Like I said, like this hut's a, a great example of all the different. Oh, here it goes. Well, I did say it was going to explode. There we go. It finally cued me into the actual thing. Oh, wants me to build stuff. We're not building stuff yet. I gotta fix stuff. So in my case, we're gonna swap off Nerd Rage. If ever you're having to fix anything, always make sure weapons get Weapon Artisan. When you repair stuff, it'll be 200% repair. So you get a lot more life and a lot more bang out of the buck that you're having to pay because this stuff is not cheap. Alright, there we go. And now that we got that, that set up, I don't think we have anything. Oh, we might need to scrap some pieces. T-51. What level are you? Level 30. Hmm. Hmm, he thinks. I'm gonna give this to my brother. I think he's gonna really enjoy this. Out of it. I'm just need to go finish putting all the pieces on it. It's only level 30, but I think it's cool. All right, so remember, scrap all the junk that you have at whatever workbench that you can. Try and reduce your weight, and. Make sure you do a little bit of scavenging. If you have to go back and break stuff again, don't worry about it. It's okay. Just do it. You're going to be happy about the results. Look at all that extra stuff we got. All right, let's turn this in and see what we got. worth of junk 10 pounds of broken down junk so that's pretty good and then we, of course I'm gonna stash these so I keep all the proboscis glands the blood bro, 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 blood bro, blah, blah, blah. my mom got me messing this up and now I'm messing it up blood bug blood bug proboscis the blowfly glands the stingwing barbs and the tick blood sacks those are what you need to turn in for the that I believe is the daily mission for the tadpole quest when you complete those things that's part of what you need to get your standard size backpack so we're gonna switch back over toggle weapon artisan off since that's repaired we're gonna go ahead and put nerd rage back on Time to toggle serendipity off. And we're gonna put on super duper. Let's make some crap happen. And uranium fever's happening. Glorious. And one of the reasons why I highly recommend going to all the different events is how fast you actually level up. 
It makes a world of difference on what you can do. Like I said, it might sound a little bit silly or it might sound kind of pointless, but it will make a huge difference. Craft everything. Go to, let's go to Uranium Fever. So, Uranium Fever is going to be one of the prime places that you're going to want to go to harvest steel. Um, besides, you're going to also get steel. If you're there for the entire event, you have the opportunity to get up to three legendary enemies that you can fight. So great for getting your weekly mission done where you have to get up to 10 legendary enemies or if you're just needing to collect legendaries for your legendary script. Make it a habit to come here and make it a habit to come here on an events team if at all possible. If you're on a full team that's events, you're probably your safest because no one can join your team but you're all going to get the max amount of XP. Um, it seems to be a little bit more forgiving with that, but remember, if you have to do work on a camp or you're doing camp building, you must be on a private team. And we lost in that. Ooh, look at all this junk on the ground. See the caps they drop and see all the materials that they drop, it's, it's so much. It's great. It's incredible the damage that this thing does now. This used to be the most potato -y thing on the planet. So this is Blackwater Mine. In this top section here, you're going to find a... Tinker's Bench. A chemistry bench, which is what we've been needing for a while now. An armor workbench. And there's a weapons workbench right over here in this building. Oh, look at that again. Right here. Pretty sure we have scrap around. Let's break all this stuff down. So when you're in an event and you have an event triggered, as long as it's a public event, you shouldn't drop your junk. I say shouldn't, but don't get in the habit of getting too used to that. Sometimes this game has things that it's very well supposed to do and it just decides, you know what, fuck all, we're not doing it. We're doing something else. So if you can, by all means, please stash your junk keep it safe and uh, and most importantly have a good time with it All right now let me go and check our time we are currently at an hour and 13 minutes so we're probably gonna stop here on the other side of uranium fever um, we'll have some more streaming tomorrow. Make sure you tune in for that. We're also going to be having sections this next coming week with my, uh, my brother who's a low-level character. So if you want to see some more of these low-level tutorials. And in that case, we'll actually be doing walkthroughs for how to get through certain missions. Um, and we're going to be doing more episodes specifically on build dynamics and ways that you can get the most out of your character. Uh, and hopefully just maximize your fun with the whole experience. So make sure to stay tuned for that. If you like what you're seeing, you're enjoying the program, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to share with your friends. And most importantly, that you uh, have that notification bell turned on and tune in again next time. We always appreciate you having here. We do appreciate any questions that you have. We'll do the best that we can to answer them. All right, let's get this party started. So to get this done, you're going to have to run all the way to the bottom of this tunnel, run into this extraction console, process and then activate the Evil extraction process. Units while operational. Hostile trespassers detected. Employees are encouraged to remove Looks trespassers like we lost an before damage also. to extractor units occurs. 
So generally you shouldn't do the make the whole come here thing at uranium fever unless you see a, uh, a legendary however my friend is with me on the team and I don't know if she knows if it's time to do this. Just absolutely peppering him with plasma rounds. So, and the big thing with uranium fever is this one is you have to make sure to keep these units repaired and in good working condition by the time the, the timer runs out. If you have all three of them working in together, it increases your odds of getting three of the legendary cores. So make sure that you do a good job to try to keep them all together as best you can. Oh, we got dead. That was big deaded. There is, there is no coming back from that. All right, let's try this again. Boom, boom. Detecting terminated management personnel. Remove this individual from the premises. Just roasted them right into a level up. Nice. And I got the kill glowing creatures. Excellent. Where are we at the scoreboard now? Nice, I got to kill one winner. See how much junk they drop if you come to uranium fever and doing uranium fever right you should have way too much junk and be way overweight and just be really questioning your choices and be like stone why did you tell me to come here and pick up everything to which i would tell you viewer that you need to in fact pick up everything you see this pick that up you see this you pick that up all this you pick all that up all the cement here? Yeah, you need that. You don't know it yet, but you need it. This brain fungus on the wall? You definitely need that. And so you see how we're already almost double our carry weight? This is how you know you're doing uranium fever right. And we're not even completely, we're not even all the way done with the event Adequate yet. Uranium volume extracted and processed. Output quantity increased. Then just make sure that the machines are all fixed. Detecting terminated management personnel. Remove this individual from the premises. So whenever you see the uh, legendary, make sure to call it out. Or just get swatted like a fly. You know, that's always an option.
Oh, there's a two star up here. It's opening nice little chunky pieces everywhere. That's awesome. This completed Gold Star Daily Challenge. I don't even know what the hell I did exactly. That was with the regular plasma sign, plasma rifle, not even the ultra sight. Let's see how this one does with the DWA. And I just got swatted. Swatted. Shit. No one's gonna come and save me. Nice. We got nothing. That thing seems to work about the same speed. Wow, no, that, that does bite him a little bit harder. Lots of dead bodies. I think we got most of the loot picked up so we don't have to hang out around here too much. Oh nice. Legendary. One star. Extraction complete. Extractors must complete cleaning and ventilation process before continuing operation. Please vacate. Nice, look at all the junk. There's a box of five, five, six. Grab that tin can. So like I said, guys, make sure that you're always running around. You're grabbing everything that's not nailed to the ground. There's a whole bunch of really useful stuff. Even stuff that you might not think is useful ends up being super, super useful. Make sure you look out for any of the uh, little meat piles with the little flies on them. Those are usually a pretty good indicator that there's something there. Yeah, we're going to be getting ready to shut this stream down here in just a minute also. I'm going to about walk this down to White Spring. We're going to go turn this in. So this is one of those moments where I was telling you guys that you can either uh, you can sell weapons, caps, or excuse me, weapons, uh, chems, or aid for your caps that you need for the day. Well, in my case here, I'm gonna hit this right away delivered. In this case here because I've already scrapped down several amounts of guns and uh, we had a lot of different ones that I was able just to just turn in uh, to my scrap box there I'm gonna sell these guns so we can max out our, our uh, daily caps 
Normally I search that area a lot more thoroughly, but I just, I'm kind of done. I'm done. We've been at this for a little while now, so. And we went over most, of, some of the basic stuff next time. Uh, I guess we'll go over perk cards a little bit better in detail. And we'll go over some of the basic, most essential perk card combinations that you're going to need for everyday survival and for maximum, pretty much maximum oomph. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure that you're picking up all the wood that you can possibly find, that you're scrapping everything um, using scrapper perk, using super duper when you craft. If you can, if you're too low level and you don't have it, please ask one of your teammates that's higher level to share it with you. Usually anybody that um, has nine charisma or more can share a three star perk. So make sure you go and have them do that. That'll make a huge impact. Alright. What do we got here? Gas canisters. I think gas canisters are aluminum, so. It's one thing you can never get enough of is uh, enough aluminum. Usually, right here, there's a plan. It's a sensor array. Usually you can get rare power armor plans right here. And in some cases, rare power armor. But this one right here is just, I think, a level, also level 45 raider. Yeah, not that exciting. Pretty garden variety. Which if, you know, like I said, if you were low level up, lower level, I would highly recommend breaking that down. It's a great source of steel. You can get a lot of different other resources. I'm just going to use this real quick. I mean, as you can see, it did fuck all to reduce my weight, but every little bit that you can count, counts. So make sure you do that. I need to make a bunch more plasma cards. Usually there's an adhesive right here also. That is the power of the nuclear grenade. One of the things that we're gonna talk about in the next show. Uh, nukas, quantums, what does all that shit mean? It means absolute dominance. We just annihilated all those guys. So that was perfect. So we got a little, little bit more junk now that we can use to turn in. Some more meat that we can cook. So we're going to break down all the scrap in our inventory. Now let's go and sell this out and get our caps for the day. So we're still at 1320, so we have a fair amount of caps to get. Let's see what we can get. See, 37 bucks each, 45 each, 45. Two bucks for a board. 18 bucks, 31. 31 32 for the missile launcher 22 each for the mole miner gauntlets Twenty six for the assault rifles eight for the pipe rifles 25 for the double barrels 11 for the pump actions 8 for the sledgehammers. And not bad, not bad. That took a pretty decent chunk out. We're gonna sell this guy also. Sell the baseball grenade. We'll sell the cryogenic grenade. Nice, we got the score challenge for, this, for the... Caps. Nice!
Well, shit, that worked out. A little bit more grinding turned out pretty good. Oh, I need to sell. Well, I'll put the Tesla away for now. I could probably sell that out of my shop. I'll put this power in my chest and be like, why the hell did I put this in here? Guaranteed. Alright, let's make sure everything that can be broken down is. We already have a clean hard hat, so we don't need those. We'll break down the cigarettes. The radar sensor array, we're gonna sell at our shop. Here we got the more lead. Dash the gunpowder. I guess the ultra side of I guess we're just about done here. Just wanted to make sure I got Your everything service, as ready as it can be for tomorrow. Like I said, tomorrow we will sign back in. We will be doing more of an in-depth conversation with regards to perk cards, perk card layouts, uh, synergies, and problems that can occur. Sir, so make sure you tune in to that. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of an earlier broadcast. It just depends. Make sure that you follow us on Discord for all of our latest updates. Make sure if you did like the channel that you like this, you have your notification bell turned on so you know next time that we're live. And share with your friends. We are on, like I said, Facebook, YouTube, and um, yeah, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So if you're following us on one and haven't seen us on the other, make sure you check us out over there. We really appreciate your support. Thank you for tuning in. Once again, and always. I'm Stone, she's Natural Queen Bee, we're Natural Typical Gamers, and we can't wait to see you all again next time. You all have a beautiful rest of your evening, and we will see you soon. Wave. Wave, Commando Stone. Good job, buddy. See you all next time.